guys, that scene said it all. That is the moment from the last episode everyone is talking about. Don't get me wrong, there's a good amount of people talking about Candace and Charles and what the FBI and President have in store for them, but the Lion Tattoo has taken the channel by storm. Thank you all for the support on the playlist I made, videos from last year. I'm talking March, April, May. All last year, those videos are being viewed. The views are spiking up. Comments on those videos, the shares. I cannot thank you enough. But before going any further, special shout out to Mr. Derek David himself, a.k.a. Keith Burke. Make sure you follow him on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I think that between... Derek and Vinnie Malone, those are probably the two most frequent members of the cast that I speak with on almost a daily basis. Great guy, follow Keith. Like seriously, call, show him some love, follow him, follow him, follow him. This video is going to be almost a culmination of all the lion tattoo videos and we're talking over 40 videos but i've been getting a lot of requests like yo we love the playlist you're putting the mystery together ever since it was first mentioned but can you explain the lion tattoo and everything and honestly that's why i did a video called what is the lion tattoo which is sitting pre with over 60,000 hits right now so what i not to be lazy i think the best way to put it is go through the playlist because i break stuff down but for the sake of this video, there are a few, I think there's one big thing, a misconception amongst the haves and the have not community that we need to squash right now. I went back and watched season five, episode four of The Lion. And if I'm not mistaken, you can find this episode on Hulu. And usually I don't promote um, non-owned venues of watching the episodes but i did catch this episode on daily motion because i actually just googled the line so i pulled up on hulu but daily motion had it it was the first click so i just did it i re-watched the opening scene of that episode and if you remember it's um right after hannah told candace that the man who came into the room was her father when it really, really wasn't she recounted the tale of the night she got raped with by the man with the lion tattoo and something that has been hounding me over the past year, it's Jeremy, how could it be Derek? Hannah said she was raped by an older man and Derek looks to be around the same age range as Hannah. So there's no way he could be the lion tattoo man. Maybe it was his father. Maybe it was a brother of his or associate, whatever the case may be. And I have to admit, uh, another shout out to Queen Cat. I even um, gave her a shout out in a couple of the videos and live streams. Her idea was something I never thought about. What if the lion tattoo was a symbol for whatever gang or crew that Derek ran with back in the day? And so Derek isn't the only person with a lion tattoo. And it's very possible that Hannah got raped by someone from that group that Derek, um, you know, ran with. And I think it's very likely that that list of hitmen and other associates of Derek's that he gave over to Veronica uh, sometime last season. And that led to the hitman being hired to take out David and Erica, a.k.a. the car bomb. What if all those guys have lion tattoos and one of them is Candace's father? Quite possible. But Hannah never said an older man. Because I went back. If you do not believe me, guys, go back to the first uh, 10 minutes of the episode. Season 5, episode 4, The Lion. Season 5, episode 4, The Lion. Now, I took some quick notes here. I uh, didn't get word for word, but trust me, I did write down the uh, man part. Just to kind of give you a recap, we know that Hannah is recounting the night she actually got raped because Candace is a rape baby. And Tinka Sumner, I give her props because even though I hated Candace's attitude in the episode, um, she was tearing up during the story, but the way she was able to keep herself composed for the most part as Hannah was breaking down like Hannah was visibly shaking talking about that night and I believe she said she never really told anybody about it aside from her aunt but we'll get to that um long story short something that and I need to set the stage here because I know that people I have been seeing comments you talk too much you talk about things we already know uh not to go on a rant because I don't want to be that guy I just want you all to know this is called a review channel. First, it was the haves and the have nots review. Now, for however long it is, 
if loving you is wrong review this channel is made by a fan me i have no affiliation with tyler perry tyler perry studios own or whatever the case may be i'm just a fan like everyone else um who used to tweet which i still do i transcended over to a wordpress blog for like three years while just typing out blogs and then a friend recommended yo your blogs are great you have a great voice get yourself a microphone do youtube because more people watch videos and read blogs came over here so i made the transition this channel is all about reviewing these shows i get it if you know the episodes inside and out if you know everything about the show that's all well and good but maybe that means the channel isn't for you this channel is for fans who love to discuss this stuff stuff i mean we live in a day and age where people review movies tv shows bit by bit i don't want to be that guy who just reviews stuff that just does a recap i want to dig deeper i want to take elements from very seasoned and try to unearth you know clues and hints and mysteries that we have going on you know five seasons later so if you're a person who says man you talk too much you, you overcomplicate things that everybody's entitled to your opinion but you don't need to comment that you don't we don't need that ignorance in the comment section you can click off the video you can unsubscribe so if you're one of those people you know how to click off because this is youtube there are millions of other people you can listen to so just to get the haters out of the way but we need to go back to some of the earlier theories about Hannah's life prior to becoming a Christian. A lot of people just talked about how Hannah was a hypocritical Christian. You know, how can she say she doesn't want to talk to her daughter? And she even said in an earlier episode in season one, like she wished she would have had a miscarriage or something because Candace being born almost killed her. It's like what she flipped over inside the womb or something like that. And that was season one. I think this was after Hannah found out that Benny took out the mortgage on their house and the house was about to be foreclosed on. And she literally said that. And that literally put Benny in tears. Mind you, this is pre-coma Benny, a.k.a. a Benny that was actually very naive, but very likable. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Hannah definitely did not have a lot of fans. I've done plenty of videos talking about it. But for me, Hannah really began to redeem herself during the multiple times she attempted to make peace with Candace. But just like in the episode, The Lion whenever Hannah would go over to see Candace to apologize for her past mistakes and whatnot, Candace would receive what Hannah was saying, but just tell her to leave and then silently cry to herself, kind of like she did in this episode. And a lot of misconceptions were, you know, Candace always kept talking about how she grew up with a crazy ass Hannah and whatnot. And she wanted to do everything she could to get away from her. And then, yeah, well, how do why do you think I turned out the way I did, you know, growing up with you? And a lot of people assume that Hannah was just like Candace back in her day, but probably didn't play at the high level stakes that Candace does in regards to swindling powerful and rich men out of their money. So a lot of people assumed that, you know, even Tony, for example, who I believe it was established that they didn't meet in church so you know or was that the grocery store I, I forgot but in any case they were just saying that um you know well yeah tony's just one example of all the men that she's been with based off her recount you know the tale she recounted to candace i don't really think that's the case because let's just talk about you know this scene in general so what we're going to do now is go over the notes here about what hannah said to candace in regards of the night that she got raped all right so whew. Let's get into it, guys. I'm not going to lie. Rewatching that episode really put me in the mood. Like, that was a powerful scene. Basically, the night of the rape, Hannah was hanging out with some friends, you know, having a good time. She was young, single, no kids, hanging out at the club, drinking. Uh, basically, they left the club around 3 a.m., you know, walking home. Uh, had a little bit too much to drink. Uh, all of them got to their houses, but Hannah had about two more blocks to go. And she was singing, it was only two more blocks. Uh, she was trying to find her keys, but couldn't find them. And this is where we get to the part about the man. So she's going down the street and she sees a man blocking the street. Hey, pretty lady, you all right? I'm good. But she got a bad feeling about this man. She got a little nervous. So she started walking just a little bit faster. She wanted to run, but her feet weren't moving. She looked behind um, when she was walking faster but the man was just standing there. But when she was trying to run but couldn't, she could hear him coming up behind her. So she eventually got to her aunt's house. Remember, she was younger, living with her aunt at the time. Uh, she couldn't find her key. She knocked. There was no answer. Um, but then she ended up, 
I think she said she was like crouched down in like the corner of the porch. So, you know, she was probably well hidden within the shadows and she saw the man, you know, going down the street and passing the house and uh, pretty much was crouched over for about two hours and her aunt came home high. So leaving the club around three, we can assume the aunt came around five, five thirty in the morning. Uh, the aunt came passed out on the couch. And Hannah went to her room, made sure all the doors and windows were locked. But for whatever reason, you know, she eventually said, I must have fallen asleep. And when I woke up, I felt his th hand around my throat and I could feel him inside me. And he was saying that if you scream or make any noise, I will kill you. And. Damn, this is hard. Um, she was saying that. While she was being raped. I'm not crying, y'all. I'm just like feeling the scene because go back and rewatch the scene. You'll get what I'm saying here. Uh, that's when, you know, during that time, she can actually just recall and just see the eyes and nose that Candace has. And every time she looks at Candace, she sees the man. And any time the man would rise up, that's when she would see the lion tattoo. And at that time in the episode, season five, Episode four, the lion, she did not mention the lion tattoo was on the chest. She just said whenever he would rise up from time to time, she could see the lion. But it wasn't until the episode 15 minutes, the episode before out of time or the episode that came on last Tuesday. That was when Candace said the lion tattoo on his chest. So between the episode um, 15 minutes and the episode, the lion, I was pretty much in a place where I thought the tattoo was on his arm, his upper shoulder, his upper back in a position where if he was on top of Hannah, she would see it when he rose up. But yeah, it was on his chest. So from there, she just talked about how she didn't want to have a baby. But also she said about two weeks later, you know, she told her aunt because up until that time, you know, the aunt was just like, you're acting a bit weird because, you know, Hannah was obviously traumatized. She eventually told her aunt what happened. And when that happened, she went into a 12 step program and then from there started going to church. And then Hannah went as well and said, if you're staying with me, then you're not going to get an abortion. And Hannah hated that. But then when she had Candace, you know, she just saw how beautiful she was. So in a way, it's almost like. And I hate to say this is almost like Hannah being raped, not only turn her auntie on the right path to stop doing drugs and getting high but then took her aunt to the Lord and then Hannah followed suit. So in a way, even though Candace is in a, uh, you know, before they actually made peace last week, guys, I'm talking about go back to like season one to where we are now. It's kind of ironic, you know, an act of Satan, you know, being raped. And then, you know, that actually not just affected Hannah's life, but turned her aunt's life around and possibly saved her life from having an eventual overdose. Um, led to them going to church and whatnot, even though Candace was the devil for quite some time on the show. Um, I, I got to say, it, it is very, very heartbreaking to hear that story. But she never once said an older man. She just said a man. So, guys, we can squash that because a lot of people are like, what if Jeffrey Owens because he's older? And nah, 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 nah. I'm not saying that Jeffrey Owens isn't the guy, but we can just strike off the it was an older man. No, it was that, that wasn't the case. It was a man blocking Hannah's path in the road, but Hannah passed him by. So she never once said older man, guys. Never once said older man. And um, yeah, so that was the big uh, thing. Or I don't want to say misinformation. I think I'll just say it was a common misconception. I guess it's the best way to put it. I, I don't think I could just put the blame on one person, but there we go. But uh, from there, you know, we pretty much went over the details about how Candace came into being, came to be. And yeah, you're probably, well, Jeremy, what about all those stories she told in earlier seasons about like how she told Wyatt, Amanda and Jeffrey that the last time she ever saw her father was at her. She was a toddler. It was at her birthday or whatever. And she saw him in the back of a cop car. Those are all lies because literally go back to season. Well, then again, you really can't blame Candace for all the lies because there are a lot of things from the earlier seasons of the haves and have nots that have been retconned, such as Benny being older than Candace. Don't believe me. Go back and watch season one. Trust me. You'll see. But now that we've talked about how Candace came to be and we pretty much broke down the details about this man, what do we know about Derek? What do we know about Derek? So I guess the best thing to do is 
talk about everything we do know in regards to his past for the most part, little details about his life and how he became the man that he is now. And I'm going to be honest here. If I were to go back through my playlist, I think there are two particular videos that I think are the best in regards to me breaking things down and actually turning out to be right. Um, I forgot the I forgot the video titles, but there was that one video I think I did called Confirmed Candace. Derek is Candace's father. I think I did two videos with that title. I think the thumbnail was when Hannah and Derek were kissing, but then there's also the one where the thumbnail is Derek and Candace standing side by side. Because a lot of people, another piece of evidence is the whole, well, if, if their nose and eyes are the same, then why didn't Candace reckon, I mean, why didn't Hannah recognize it? And in those videos, I break it down. I think the biggest things I broke down were the change of Derek's eyes, Derek crying during the prayer, um, you know, for Hannah and Candace after, you know, Malik had broken in and Hannah told Derek that she was raped. And then the, I think it was the episode, the third quarter. Yeah, the third quarter. I talked about how different quarters of his life. So let's talk about the basic information about Derek first, and then we'll move into everything I just talked about. All right. We're just going to kind of go over the basic stats here. So Derek is a deacon at church. He has three college age sons who all play sports. He lost his wife about a year ago to cancer. Um, both Hannah, or excuse me, both Veronica and Catherine have been trying to set him up on dates with women. But uh, Hannah seems to be the first one that, you know, he's a, not only agreed to go on a date with, but actually liked. Um, Veronica got him out of jail because apparently when he was younger, he ran with the wrong crowd, but Veronica got him out of jail. They had sex at least one time. And I know people are like, Jeremy about the Jeff. Uh, I did do a video about Derek being Jeffrey's father, allegedly, but maybe I'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. Um, but from there, after getting him out of jail, um, uh, Veronica, excuse me, Veronica was able to kind of put, Derek's life on the straight and narrow you know he's a man of many different talents you know carpentry because he built the house that Hannah's staying in right now uh plumber um you know sprinklers and everything so I'm guessing like yard maintenance and everything so uh, let's just say handyman is the best way to simplify that handyman and um from there Veronica pretty much um I guess you could say gave him work within her circle of wealthy and powerful friends. So basically that's how Derek um, got to be the man he is today, working a honest day's living, making good money, supporting his wife and three kids. And yeah, so he's doing pretty well for himself. But keep in mind that list he gave Veronica pretty much solidified the fact that he isn't, he's no longer living the life he used to, but he hasn't fully let go of it in the sense that he's able to call upon contacts if necessary. Hence why he was able to give her access to a full list of men, or let me just say associates, because for all we know, there might be women on that list too. Who knows? A list of his former associates to do dastardly deeds. So let's just put it that way. And I mean, so he still has connections Not to mention, you know, after Malik broke into the house and, you know, Hannah was devastated by what happened. Derek was talking with Benny about, you know, how, hey, are you, I used to be young, too. I ran for crowd. We'll find out who this guy is and make sure he never comes back. So that let us know that, yeah, Derek is not unable to reach back to his old contacts. Hell, he even threatened Veronica saying that if you make me go back there again, referring to his past, you know, ways of doing things, then he'll come after her. You know, if she ever threatens him again, too. So, yeah, that's not going to end up too well. But uh, on top of that, he apparently knows Stephanie Mills. <laughs> but hey, I ain't faulting him for I ain't faulting him for that because I mean that put me on her music more now than ever. Like I grew up uh, listening to "I Feel Good All Over," "Home," um, "Never Knew Love Like This." But after she appeared on the Haves and Have Nots, I, I I couldn't stop listening to her music on repeat. So we know that Derek had a pretty interesting life, and I think, like I said earlier, the third quarter, one of the better episodes for his character because I remember breaking it down. I'm like. Well, think of it this way, guys, and excuse me, I'm actually in front of my notebook just jotting this stuff down as I'm talking. You got to look at it, the third quarter. So to make it simple, let's just say each quarter, you know, easy math is 25 years. So in the first 25 years of his life, Derek ran with the wrong crowd. He was rowdy pretty much. Well, I don't mean to sound like a like he was a pirate like 
uh, plundering and pillaging and robbing and killing. And if he was the man with the lion tattoo, raping. And that's what landed his ass in jail. But then when Veronica helped him out, that's when he got to the second quarter of his life. Uh, this is Derek within, you know, age 26 to 50. And again, I'm just speculating here. The episode was called the third quarter and uh, Derek said he was in the third quarter. So let's just make it simple, guys. Simple math here from 26 to um, 50. He was pretty much addressing how, yeah, during that second quarter, he doesn't go into elaborate detail either. I just kind of, you know, balancing off what he said when he said third quarter of his life. So just follow me on this during that second quarter. We can assume that's when, you know, um, after Veronica got him out of jail, he started working legit. Found a nice woman, got married, had the three kids or three sons, you know, started going to church more, uh, became a deacon. But then unfortunately, when you get to either the ending of the second quarter or right into the third quarter, you know, age 50, 51, if you will, uh, that's when his wife unfortunately passed away and he became a widower for about a good year before Hannah came into the picture. And that's why he, I mean, I can understand it. Like the way I looked at it based off how he was talking about Catherine and Veronica trying to set him up on dates. I don't think any of those dates either panned out. And because of that, you know, since his wife passed, Derek has probably been a virgin for a virgin for, you know, however long his wife has been died, uh, you know, passed away. And, you know, being that she had cancer, we can only assume, you know, she went through chemo and all these other um, forms of therapy and I don't think they will be able to have sex during that time. So let's just assume that uh, Derek has been without sex or without relations for at least over a year, which kind of could explain why he was acting like a horny teenager <laughs> um, with Hannah, you know, during their first couple of dates and encounters and whatnot. And it was playful, too. But there were times where like, yo, man, he's coming on a bit strong. But it was kind of a playful nature to it, which it was great because Hannah was smiling and. You know, everybody was like, man, why don't you get, man, Hannah needs to give him some and whatnot. But I respected the fact that she was willing to wait. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, you really have to look at it from Hannah's perspective, not just men, but people in general, whoever she lets into her life and get close to like Celine, you know, they knew each other for a couple of years before, you know, the beginning of the series in episode one, but eventually she turned her back on Hannah and betrayed her. Then you have Byron, who, if I'm not mistaken, was the first man in the series that Hannah became close to because this was during the time where Benny was in the coma and um, Jim had hired Byron to be the eyes and ears of Hannah just to make sure he would be notified whenever she decided to go to the cops to say that Wyatt was the one responsible for the hit and run. And then when Hannah found out, she was devastated because remember, this was at a time where it was almost like a love triangle, if you will, where Byron and Hannah were getting close. But then you also have Michael, who was the father of the father of the basically the simplify way. He was little Lizzie's grandfather. So in that love triangle, Michael was finding comfort in Hannah because remember, they both had a common um unfortunately a common set of misery because both Benny and little Lizzie were victims of the hidden run. So they pretty much got close over that and hell it got to the point where Michael even cut her grass. But, um, and I mean, the, and I mean the yard, the yard, <laughs> but unfortunately Hannah seemed to pick Byron over Michael. And then that ended up biting her in the ass, which is kind of ironic because the next morning, <laughs> what was it? At the um, welcome home Benny party, remember, this is when Benny got out of the hospital from the uh, coma. You know, Hannah was ho ho having like a welcome home Benny party and Michael was there and Hannah was trying to cheer him up and he was too drunk to go home. So she ended up sleeping in her bed while she slept on the couch. Then the next morning they were, I ain't gonna lie, it looked like they were probably going so far to have sex, but then Benny walked in on them. So yeah, I mean, for people like me who are mad at Benny for interfering with Derek and Hannah all the time, he was doing this way back in season three. So this is not uncommon behavior. Ever since he got out of that coma, he hasn't been the same. So, yeah, I mean, with Michael, think nothing against Michael because, well, I, I guess the plot really didn't demand it. You know, like he was just there and then he was kind of gone. The last time we saw him was when he was at Candace's house, when uh, Candace trying to get Michael and Benny to sue the criers. And that was it. I don't think we're ever going to see him again, unfortunately, because honestly, I felt like Michael was the perfect person for um 
Hannah. No offense, Derek, but yeah, I thought he was literally the perfect person for her. But I went to a video that said, what man is right for Hannah? But, you know, I already that video, it goes over everything. But, um, yeah, to actually not give it up to Derek made sense. Because, once again, you and not to mention her on-again, off-again friendship with Catherine being on the rocks due to Catherine lying about Wyatt. Well, technically not lying, but not admitting that Wyatt hit Benny. And then all the drama that unfolds at the crier house and... Unfortunately, Hannah kind of unattaching herself from Catherine due to her marriage with Jim and Jim just being an ass. So, yeah, basically almost everyone. And then, of course, losing Quincy Jr. and then her daughter as well. Um, pretty much anyone Hannah seems to get close to ends up betraying her, leaving her or dying. So I can see why she would be so quick not to rush into a. Uh, sexual relationship with someone and to be honest I don't want to kind of speculate this bad but I mean this far but is it possible that Hannah never had sex ever since Benny was born so maybe she had sex with Tony and then now it's the last time she had sex with somebody I could be wrong probably am wrong about that because remember Candace got molested when she was younger because of one of the men that Hannah used to run with so mm, she probably has sex but it's been a while Let's just say since Benny and Candace were kids, I think it's the best uh, way to simplify that. Would you agree? Whatever. But in any case, we can pretty much speculate that it's been a quite some time. It's, it's been longer for Hannah than it's been for Derek. And, you know, I, I can't really relate. I'm 27, uh, waiting until marriage. It's just a personal choice. So I really can't say, you know, how it would feel to not have it for that long if you've had it before. And I know I probably went on like a five minute sex tangent and I did not mean to go into it. But remember, this video is who is Derek David. And when I do these kind of videos, it's not just about Derek himself. We need to explore the character and personalities of everyone involved with his character. Remember, Derek is one guy, but his character and personality is showed when he's interacting with other people. Just want to kind of set it up there. So because he was determined, I mean, you, when you think about it, Derek has put up with a lot more than most men would and this again this is before we found out the tattoo guys everything i'm kind of talking about is from the perspective of someone who only speculated that derek was the guy with the tattoo i'm not talking as someone who now knows it is true because of the finale uh the cliffhanger of the finale out of time think of it this way um you're dealing with a woman who isn't going to give it up on the first date and in the comment section, speak as you will. Like, look, it, a woman should not give it up on the first day. I'm not saying she should, but I'm just talking like modern day standards and the fact that these people are in another generation than we are. So keep that in mind. You're dealing with a woman who doesn't want to give it up to you. you you're dealing with a woman who, well, has gone through a lot. She comes with a lot of emotional drama. You're coming with, to a woman with, a, a giant man child mama's boy who is constantly disrespectful and still lives with his mother, Benny. Then you find out that her daughter is pretty much even worse than her son, pretty much the incarnation of the devil, who even sent a thug to attack her own mother. <laughs> um, you're dealing with a woman who has quit her jobs more times. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of Hannah, but she has quit her jobs. Uh, more times than Veronica said she's going to quit drinking and succeed in that. So, yeah, you're dealing with a woman who's, well, unemployed. Oh, God. Derek has been through the ropes. It's like any time you try to get romantic with her, something comes up, whether it be Benny or some big dramatic event that prevents you from actually moving forward in their relationship. Going to the beach house on the weekend. Nope, Melissa jumped from the roof. Uh, going to the Bahamas for like, what was it, a week, two weeks or whatever? Nope. Um, you know, Hannah had a falling out with the criers over the millions of dollars in the bank account. Try to just comfort Hannah because her son was stabbed in the hospital and she asked you to spend the night. And she put on those, what was it, uh, the granny bloomers or whatever. I forgot what she, the moo-moos, granny moo-moos. Instead of granny moo-moos, she put on like, you know, lingerie that pretty much made it hard no pun 
intended for Derek to actually control himself just cuddling in bed that night. And they actually had an understanding about, you know, look, Derek, it's been a while since I've been in this kind of situation. I just want to look beautiful and sexy. And it actually turned from, you know, him being disappointed to, you know, her being a tease to actually a playful understanding moment. And then Benny ruined it and literally kicked your ass out of the bed. And the list goes on. Derek has put up with so much crap. It's amazing that he even stuck around that long. I mean, next thing you know, you're sitting right across from Hannah's daughter and the president elect. So, yeah, Derek certainly moved up. And I also said back in that episode, Battle for the Past, what, isn't it something? Candace and her, well, the president elect are sitting across from her parents. I said that a lot, too. So Derek has definitely put up with a lot of stuff. So he's definitely changed from the man he used to be, which goes back to what I said about 15 minutes ago about the whole, well, how come if Derek is the man with the lion tattoo and the one that raped Hannah and is Candace's father, how come Hannah did not recognize the look in his eyes and the nose because they're the same? Go back to another episode and I forgot what episode it was, but it was like, um, it was in season three after Amanda was killed. Well, yeah, Amanda died. And then Hannah and Benny went over to the Sarandon Hotel. And that's when we learned a full story about how Candace was molested when she was younger. But then Benny kept trying to say that, come on, Ma, Candace is legit now. She got a legit job. She has a, you know, a nice boss who's giving her all this great stuff. But then Hannah's like, Benny, I don't like this because when someone like your sister has been influenced by the power of God and it made a true change in her life, you'll be able to see that change in them. And I don't think she said I specifically, but we can almost assume that a person's like aura, their demeanor will be completely shifted from where it is or where it was when they were hustling and whatnot. I think the same for Derek. When he was younger, yeah, he probably had that cold, evil demon look in his eyes like Candace did when she came over to the house to see if Hannah was okay after being attacked by Malik and you know she tried to act all friendly and whatnot but then when she hunched over like the hunchback or a vulture that's when you know Hannah started calling her demon and whatnot and got her to leave the house that look in her eye that look in her eye then completely different from the look in her eyes when she came over to the house in the episode 15 minutes two different people two different people the same people but two different sets of eyes. I think the same thing happened to Derek where his eyes used to have that cold, dark, evil stare. But then when he came to the light, and I'm guessing this happened during the second quarter of his life, that's when he he didn't begin just a spiritual change in his life, but also like a physical one. Maybe not like, um, you know, Pokemon evolving or, you know, going Super Saiyan where it's a drastic change in physical appearance. Sometimes a person can go from having a mean, stern look to having a more gentle personality and face, if you will. I guess it's the best way to put it. So I think that's one reason why Candace wasn't automatically identified as Derek's daughter because Hannah just saw a different look in Derek's eyes today as opposed to when she got raped. I guess it's the best way to put that. Dang, guys, this video is pretty lengthy, so give yourself a pat on the back if you made it this far in the video. And also, just a quick shout out to my own channel. Be sure to subscribe, comment, like, and, you know, share this video around. I hope this video gets a lot of traction. And, guys, we aren't done. We are not done. But I said I'm going to make this a mega video, meaning that I'm going to put everything there is into it because, well, I didn't feel like doing, like, 12 separate videos. There's no need. I just wanted to cover the basis of how Candace came into existence, a.k.a. the night Hannah was raped. Everything we know so far about Derek David as a character, as well as his past. Things leading up to, you know, where we are now with him having the tattoo. And uh, pretty much breaking down who he is as a person now compared to when he was younger. Because there's so many things we don't know about him yet that will be exposed later on. So, yeah. So, be sure to share this video around. And let's get back into the topic by talking about his potential connections to other people with the lion tattoo all right so earlier i talked about the fact that you know what queen cat had an excellent theory about you know um a younger Derek running with a crowd and their insignia being the lion tattoo so maybe Derek is one of many men with the lion tattoo and maybe somebody else within the group actually raped hannah maybe somebody from the list he gave to veronica but 
I think the most damning piece of evidence that Derek is the man goes back to after Hannah was reeling from being it was when Malik broke into the house. Remember, this was during Candace's. I'm going to send a thug every night until you agree to sign that money over to me. Why it's inheritance. Uh, pretty much we know that Hannah stabbed Malik. He escaped the house, jumped in the van and drove off. Hannah running out of the house screaming, banging on doors, trying to get anyone to help. I think Derek was across the street trying to fix the air conditioning unit for the uh, yeah the, the apartment complex across the street. And when he would finish, he was hoping to... Uh, you know, either pick up something to eat or do something with Hannah because, you know, they. I think that same day, that's when Melissa jumped from the damn roof. Damn, what a day. Sheesh. That was, speaking of which, that was an awkward episode. Like, the first 10 to 15 minutes were the paramedics, Veronica, Hannah, and Derek just there as Melissa's just laying like a flat, bloody pancake. Weird episode. But in any case, um... <laughs> Sorry about that. Basically, you know, um, Derek and his friend who I believe was like the owner of the hardware store where the equipment could be bought. That's right, because the hardware store had closed down. But him knowing the guy, he was able to call him in order to uh, get the part. They were trying to fix up the air conditioning unit. And then they heard Hannah screaming. Derek rushed to her aid. The cop showed up, blah, 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 said they would be back. And they never did. And uh, basically... That's when Hannah recounts the fact that she was raped because a man breaking into the house, scaring her half to death, threatening her, reminded her of the night she was raped. And when Derek found that out, because, you know, remember, uh, Hannah was saying that the guy was telling her that Candace owed her money, uh, owed him money. And if Candace doesn't have it, you know, he's going to end up killing everyone in the house is well, even Candace. And when... She mentioned that that's when Derek started to break down, basically because he was sorry that something like that had happened to her. And I remember in that video I did confirmed. I just said, you know, as a black man who was raised a Baptist, you know, I'm one of those people. And this is just me. Like, you know, and this is the part where I talk a little bit about myself. So once again, this video is probably going to be over an hour long. But I've personally never been that person to shout or scream or dance in church. That's just how I am. Because in my church growing up, not a lot of people, I think more people who visited the church were more inclined to scream and shout and run and everything. Like, I'm not saying I came from a, I forgot what, is it like Methodist or something like that? Basically, it's like a branch of Christianity where you go to church and you just shut up. Like, you don't shout, you don't do nothing. You just sit there. I'm not saying that I grew up in a church like that because we say amen and everything, but I've personally, I'm just a person who doesn't really show emotion that much. Have I showed emotion recently? Yeah, because my crush didn't like me back. That sucked. But we're not getting into that. But um, in terms of church, in terms of just being a man in general, we really don't show emotion. Black men, you know, strong, black, like dark coffee. We, we don't, we don't sweat. We don't, we don't shed a tear. Derek, we know Derek likes Hannah. That's without a doubt. And he would be upset because the woman he cares about was put into a dangerous situation. Definitely. Recounting being raped obviously would make a man want to comfort that, you know, I, I don't want to say that woman like they're an object or I don't want to say they're a woman like they belong to him. But I just want to say, you know, that woman who recounted the tale of being raped, you know. The fact that Derek was bawling like a baby, the fact that Derek was crying harder than the woman who was raped and who just experienced a break-in and stabbed the intruder who obviously traumatized her he was breaking down more than her now as a black christian man who is a deacon at the church remember he is a deacon for him to actually break down like that that shows you one god brought him through stuff we don't know exactly what that stuff was, but God obviously brought Derek through some stuff. And for a black man to cry like that in front of a woman, that lets you fur that lets me further know that it was guilt. As in, he probably has some regrets. Either maybe he was raped when he was younger, or he was the one who was the rapist. And he had come from that part of his life. But at the same time, hearing that from the woman he cares about. 
probably put him back into the age where he was raping people and now he's in a he's in a part in in, in the third quarter of his life he's able to feel regret and just seeing hannah reeling from recounting that story probably made him feel guilty about all the women he's raped and who knows what happened to them as a result of him raping them maybe suicide uh babies aka candace or, you know, just being unable to get close to any man at any point later in life because of what he did. So I truly believe that was a key sign that Derek was the man. Because were those tears of guilt or were those tears of sympathy? I think the video was titled that too when I went into detail. And I just said, once again, for a black man to ball like that, God had taken him through some stuff. Or he's done some stuff and he's still, you know, trying to face the guilt of that. Where even where, because there are times where it may be not rape or thievery or murder, but just things in life that you have been brought through. You still, you've moved on in life. You've asked for forgiveness and maybe that person has forgiven you or, you know, you've asked God for forgiveness. But just hearing that, it's almost like, you know, what's that saying? Like, you know, when somebody hits their leg and you feel it where they, they're the ones who got hurt, but you feel it as well. It's kind of the same thing where, you know, Derek's went through that, but years ago, and he was the rapist. So just hearing that story of a rape victim may probably tugged at his heartstrings and made him guilty, remorseful and everything. So that just let me know that a black man don't cry like that unless something was wrong. So that to me was the biggest sign that he was the rapist. And uh, from there, you know, Derek makes a few appearances here and there. You know, once again, trying to get close to Hannah, but Benny ain't having it. Yeah, he's definitely endured a lot. And we don't know exactly what his relationship with Veronica was, but we do know they had sex at least one time after she got him out of jail. Kind of ironic, he ha she has a thing for inmates because one, we don't know how many men outside of David that she slept with. Two, remember, Quincy tried to have sex with her twice or rape her, if you will, but that didn't. You know, she wasn't about that, which is kind of interesting because if she got Derek out of jail, it's a good chance she knew about his past. So, yeah, you, you would sleep with Derek, but not Quincy. Well, then again, Veronica was obviously younger when they slept together, you know, Derek and her. So maybe she wasn't quite where she was now socially. So, you know, Quincy is unacceptable. I don't know. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, Veronica, I am very interested to see what's going to happen next. Um, I, I think that's something, and I this goes back to, you know, inconsistent writing would piss me off. The police were supposed to come back the very next morning to dust the kitchen for fingerprints, you know, DNA, obviously blood samples, because when Hannah stabbed Malik, you know, blood was dripping everywhere to get the culprit. I kept theorizing, okay. Derek made Hannah tea that night. Then the next morning, she he made breakfast, then went back into the kitchen to wash dishes. And Hannah was like, don't go in there. The police got to come back to get fingerprints and whatnot. Oh, no, I'll be careful. I'm like, look, man, I, I know you're probably clean and everything and able to handle it. But I don't think you wouldn't be unable to leave fingerprints for the cops not to find. And I kept saying the police are probably going to show up, get the fingerprints, go back to their lab, forensics lab or whatever. And then maybe the cliffhanger for the season and whatnot will be the police showing up or giving Hannah a phone call. Well, I would think the police would have to DC to show up in person and then talk about how, well, we got your fingerprints, obviously, because you know, you were in the kitchen, but then we also got fingerprints because Malik wasn't wearing gloves. Yeah. Malik wasn't wearing gloves. He wasn't wearing gloves, but he was touching the counter and the chairs and everything. And then of course his blood. And, um, then they would find Derek's fingerprints. And even though Derek is no longer, you know, Veronica got him out of jail, I'm guessing that maybe, just maybe, the police would say, do you know what, Derek David? And then Hannah would be like, well, yeah, you know, he's a, a friend, and um, he we both work for the same family. You know, obviously, Hannah working for the Criers. Wait, was this before or after she quit? I forgot. But, yeah, working for the Criers, and, you know, he's a handyman for everybody. And then it's like, well, are you aware of his criminal past? Wait, what? And then, you know, that's when everything will be revealed from, you know, him possibly assaulting, murdering, stealing, running with the wrong crowd and raping. And then that's when Hannah's like, oh, my God. And then I thought that was going to be God hurt me. He really hurt me. That would be the cliffhanger for the season. But that was not the case. And I have no idea when the cops are going to show up. So now that Derek showed his tattoo, will the cops magically appear the next day and then reveal his criminal past? And then maybe his connections with Veronica? 
bad writing if you ask me but that's just my opinion so i i think that yeah there are there were a lot of clues and a, a lot of people are like um excuse me <sighs> dang i've been talking too much <laughs> It's ironic in the video I talk about the people who say I talk too much and here I am in almost like the 50 minute mark. But I have taken breaks throughout the recording of this video. But um, there have been clues leading up to the lion tattoo and some people have been speculating. Man, Tyler Perry is getting sloppy. The writing is way too predictable. Yada, yada, yada. Well, that may be true. But keep in mind, there was a huge majority of people, at least on this channel on social media, who said I was completely nuts for blaming Derek and saying he wasn't the guy and it was an older guy and Jeffrey Owens is supposed to be showing up what if he's the guy or what if Derek uh, David is the guy and I've every time I've done a video where what if David is the one with the line tattoo I clearly state that fans submitted this when enough fans no matter how crazy the theory when enough people come to my inbox or comment section and ask me to do a video if enough people do so i will do a video even if i don't agree with the theory i will state in the theory here's the evidence that the fans talk about but here's my thoughts on it so yes i do those videos not for clickbait but because of fan demand but in this situation i think there were a lot of clues leading up to it um i pieced together a lot of things hence why those videos i've done over the past year are doing so well and um there you have it so the question is is Derek actually that guy that raped Hannah? Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, it's pretty obvious and Tyler Perry hasn't been doing a good job with keeping things under wraps. So it isn't that easy. It, it isn't that easy to decipher. And in some ways, I will give you that this season hasn't been as mystery filled as usual. And I'm talking about from 2018 to where we are now in 2019. But, um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, I really do think it is Derek. I honestly don't think that. I think the most interesting piece of evidence that suggests this to nobody else is the fact that there haven't been any other major or reoccurring male characters in Hannah's life. I mean, Derek showed up like what a couple of episodes before the tattoo. Oh, excuse me. The episode, the lion. Remember, he was there at uh, Hannah's place fixing the um, pipes under the sink, which, you know, Catherine sabotaged in order for those two to meet face to face. But then that was also when Hannah got the phone call to go down to the, um, the, the morgue because yeah, that's right. Quincy jr. Was cremated and um, he had some belongings in his pocket that he wanted to give to the grandmother. So Hannah went down there. So yeah, their first meeting didn't really end on a good note because, well, you know, bad news came a calling. So there's that. And also just a message to a lot of people. Well, Jeremy, you know, it's great that you were right and everything, but doesn't Benny get credit because Benny was the one that kept saying I got a bad feeling about it? No, Benny gets zero credit. But why, Jeremy? Because I think that in terms of writing, Tyler Perry could have did a lot more in order to make Benny smarter and more likable because... My thing is this, I think that writing Benny and excuse the language just to be a disrespectful asshole has done nothing positive for his character. Last year, he was literally a slut jumping in bed with anything, what, Gia, Melissa, Veronica. And then this season, it's like the stupidity of Benny from 2018 got shifted over to Jeffrey. And I'm not even going to get into Jeffrey in this video, but even though I do have to talk about him for a little bit. I think that they really could have had some scenes where Benny was warming up to Derek. Maybe not full on liking him, but enough to tolerate his presence. But then maybe Benny would raise an eyebrow when Derek was talking about when he was younger. He used to run with some, you know, you know, the wrong crowd. And that was the moment when he was talking about how he and his connections will make sure the guy who broke in on your mother won't do it again. And then that's when Benny would be like, okay, and then maybe Benny might pull a Wyatt because there have been times where Wyatt has shown that he is the son of a judge by putting in the research and setting traps, you know, like tricking Jeffrey into coming out as gay in season one and Benny doing his own research. Remember, I mean, with the Malone situation, maybe he could have, you know, pulled some connections with Mitch in order to get information on Derek if possible. And that could lead to him actually doing his own research and him having an interesting story behind the scenes instead of being an idiot who owes the Malone's money. And from there, when he actually has that moment in the last episode where he's like, I don't like this dude. Let me send him home. I got a bad feeling about him. There would be weight behind him feeling that way other than being a brat. 
he would be concerned about his mother for good reason. Like he isn't aware of all of the cards in Derek's deck, but he knows there's a Joker in there that or is a wild card, and he doesn't want his mother involved with someone like that. Or even better, have Derek and Benny actually get close. Maybe not like true father and son, but have Derek be the to- be the father that Tony never was. And then when the tattoo is revealed, it would have more of an impact on Benny than just, oh, you know what? You raped my mama. Oh, I'm going to kick your ass because now Benny is just a brute who, yes, he is fighting for the honor of his mother, but it doesn't really have weight because him and Derek really, really never had a connection, not on Derek's part, but on Benny's part. And plus, Derek has been nothing but patient with this guy the entire time. So I do think that Benny and Derek could have been written better in their few scenes together that way the reveal would have had more weight to it that's just my opinion guys like i said i'm not a writer for the show i'm just a reviewer i'm a fan like everyone else but uh moving from there you know like i said before we really need to see what's going to happen with uh will veronica you know her information on Derek be revealed uh there were signs where people were like what if Derek was set up by veronica in order to sabotage Can- uh, hannah nah that's not the case I think the biggest things to take away from if Derek is the guy, which I kind of do think he is, what will Hannah's relationship with Catherine be at this point? Will she be lashing out at Catherine? Uh, assuming, you know, she doesn't get shot with a shotgun. But um, let's say that, let's let's eliminate the Wyatt thing. Let's move on to the next day or the next 48 hours. Catherine and Hannah link up and then it's like, oh my God, how are things? Because, you know, Catherine is always one to ask Hannah, so how are things going with Derek? And then it's revealed that he was the one that raped her. Dun, dun, dun. And then she will feel all kinds of guilty. This goes back way back in 2018 when Derek said, hey, for the weekend, let's get away. I have a you know, beach house. We'll be away for the weekend. You share the same bed. I thought that would be perfect. You know, have Hannah in a situation where she's away from the city, away from people, away from technology. It's just her and Derek strolling on the beach. And it's the beach because, well... Typically, people don't wear shirts at the beach. Uh, Women wear bikinis unless it's one of those nude beaches or whatever. But then have it in a situation where, you know, Hannah doesn't have a car. She's riding with Derek. Then that night, maybe the first night, they're in the same bed. Kind of like, you know, they were um, a few episodes ago when they were in the same bed, both in clothes, not having sex, just laying there. But then maybe by Sunday night or what? let's say they leave Friday Friday night, Saturday night, the comeback Sunday, or decide to stay an extra day. Who knows? Let's just say Sunday night. You know, the Sabbath Sabbath is about to end. (laughs) Hannah's had a great weekend. She's been, hasn't been stressing. She finally decides to give Derek some. Shirt comes off, sees the tattoo. Oh my God. And there's no way to reach out to anyone. She ends up running from the house. Derek isn't like, God, Tyler Perry, man, you could have really did this good like, have Hannah running from the house and then Derek running after her, but not to rape her, of course, but just to kind of, um, what's wrong? Because remember, this would have been at a point before Derek knew that Hannah was ever raped. And then Hannah is literally having flashbacks. And this is where Tyler Perry could have definitely used flashbacks by having younger actors, uh, kind of flashing back where, while Hannah's running away from the house and Derek is running after her, have a flashback where you have a younger Hannah running down the street, remember having to drink too much, and the man is actually running behind her. That would have been great. That would have been like a horror movie. And um, that could have been the tattoo reveal. And then Hannah will be pissed the F off at Cam- uh, Ka- uh, Catherine because Catherine's wondering what's wrong. It's like, oh, okay, Derek and Hannah are gone away from the weekend. I'll talk to them on Monday then to see what's going on. And then, you know, Hannah will be devastated because Catherine would have unknowingly set her up with the man that raped her. So that would have definitely put a strain on their friendship once again. Sadly, when it really isn't Catherine's fault because she didn't know. But I feel like Tyler Perry could have definitely done more with that story. But like I said before, that's just an idea. That's how I talk on this channel. But yeah, guys, uh, I think that about covers it in regards to Hannah and Derek. But then the other theory is uh, I'll talk with my mom about Queen Cat's theory about what if um, Derek was in a gang with the lion tattoos, but someone else was the guy that raped her. And she's like, well, that's the case. You know what? Have somebody else be the father, but then have Derek be the father of Jeffrey. And I've already done a video on that. And uh, also one other thing. Well, Jeremy, 
I don't think Derek is the guy. And I'm like, well, that is a legitimate theory, but let's put it this way. Aside from him crying after Hannah talked about being raped when she was younger and they actually had that prayer for Hannah and Candace, because remember, this is at a point where Derek was like, you've been carrying this load, not just, you know, Candace, but this stress, this worry all by yourself. Let me help you with that. And yeah, that actually does sound good when you think about it. like if he was the father, you know, he actually did what Tony didn't and actually helped Hannah make it through her issues because I believe. Uh, Hannah said that Tony never played, paid a cent in child support or ever was there for Benny at all. But um, with Derek, you know, him crying after hearing Candace and Hannah talking in the living room, staring off into space, crying. I think that's what Benny said. And again, you could have Benny go down there and talk to him to see what was going on. Once again, giving those two at least a little bit of de development together. Um, why would he be crying if he never raped someone? Because if... Derek had the lion tattoo. Okay, that's fine. He has it on his chest. But if he never raped someone, he wouldn't be crying like that. So, yeah, that's why he showed Hannah the tattoo. I think he's the father. If not, then he has a lion tattoo and he must have raped some other woman. But, yeah. But moving on to Jeffrey, um, remember that Veronica and Dave, Derek had sex at least one time. Um, Is he the father, though? It depends on a couple of factors. I forgot Jeffrey's age. Was he like? T R I think that Veronica mentioned that RK is around Jeffrey's age. I think we're talking mid twenties here. Like I forgot the exact number. Somebody correct me in the comments on that. Uh, okay. So if go and I'm only speculating here, folks. I think it is safe to say that Veronica has had an affair on David multiple times. We know she has slept with Derek at least once. She slept with Judge Gilman at least once. That was the judge who Veronica went to in order to get the like paperwork in order to have Melissa institutionalized until she had her baby. And of course, you know, the infamous Catherine's father scandal, if you will. I believe even, uh, I think even, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Catherine say Jennifer Salison was involved with her father as well? Uh, when she was an up and coming attorney as well as when she was going through law school. But um, we, we can assume and David has skeletons in his closet. But I think that David was most likely more faithful to Veronica during the marriage than Veronica was. Now, it, it, it is fair to speculate that all the men outside of David that Veronica slept with was before she was married, such as, you know, the alleged ex of hers who was physically abusive, hence why. Veronica told David when they got married, never hit me, never cheat on me. So I honestly think Veronica did sleep outside of um, marriage on David. And it is, guys, it is possible that the one time she had sex with Derek was when she was married to David. And she probably pulled an Alex from if loving you is wrong and made it seem like Jeffrey was David's son, you know, checking her books in the calendar and whatnot because, you know, her and Derek probably had sex around the same time. You know, Veronica had sex with David at some point. I I, I don't know. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we do know that David is about a year or two older than Jim. He's over the age of 50. I think Jeffrey, man, I wish I remember his age. Was it 27, 25 or something? Basically in his 20s. We know he's in his late 20s, I believe. I I, I don't want to say this is the truth, but do you think it is possible that, um, do you think it is possible that, and this would be messed up if this is true, and I feel like I'm definitely going off of the Derek tattoo theory here. Do you think it is possible that Maybe Veronica and David got married because Veronica found out she was pregnant and didn't want her child to be a bastard. Because I'm pretty sure based off Veronica living his high city life now, even back then, she didn't want to be pregnant or have a child who was before she was married. So, I mean, I do remember she said in college that she was a freshman, a senior was attracted to her. They were going out, but then she got knocked up and then he left her. Then she got an abortion and wasn't able to have a baby since then until Jeffrey came along. So she felt every miscarriage and whatnot was God 
forsaking her and punishing her for that abortion. So I'm willing to bet that she probably did not want to have a child out of wedlock. Wait, is that the correct term? Wedlock or before she got married with David based on what happened in college. And we don't know if the abusive ex was that same guy. Who knows? But um, that would be pretty damn messed up if Derek was the father of Jeffrey and then the only reason Veronica wanted to get married to David right then and there was because she was pregnant and didn't want a baby that was a bastard. And then it turns out D David wasn't the father. But then again, I don't know if Jeffrey was born before or after Veronica went to rehab and Veronica was on pain meds and everything and hurt her back and whatnot. So I don't know. I'm, th that's just pure speculation. Maybe it'll be his own video. Who knows? But yeah, that'll be pretty jacked up because... If Derek is Candace's father and the man that raped Hannah and the father of Jeffrey, then that would make Candace, Benny, and wait. So Candace and Benny are siblings because they share the same mother. But then if Derek is the guy who was the father of Candace, but then also the father of Jeffrey, wouldn't that make Jeffrey and Candace have siblings? Uh, who knows? This is a weird family tree. But in any case, guys, I think that about covers it. I think that about covers Derek David from top to bottom. At least everything we know of him as of right now. Gosh, this video wore me out. Uh, once again, if you made it this far, you are a trooper. Not every video on the channel is this long, as you can obviously tell. But this is probably one of the longer ones. But I felt that because the Derek topic was so huge ever since the cliffhanger ending, we had to go over everything there is to know. If there is anything I missed, feel free to let me know. But if it's something that Jeremy forgot to mention this, but then I mentioned it in a previous video, then I'll just say, hey, go check out the Lion Tattoo playlist because it's all there. But Derek has definitely been a hot new character to the series where... He has come into the show for a little over a year and he's easily one of the most talked about characters in a good way. That says a lot. So as I mentioned before, uh, be sure to follow Mr. Keith Burke on social media. Once again, great guy to talk to. Um, I, I did check out his interview on the uh, trend, I believe, uh, earlier today. That was my first time seeing him in an interview rather than just reading an uh, interview in a, um, on an online article. Seems like a very chill guy. Um, definitely the right guy for the job. Definitely hell of an actor. But with that being said, I guess this is it. The question is, do you believe he is the father of Candace? Do you believe he is the man that raped Hannah? Do you believe he is possibly Jeffrey's father? Because I am a bit disappointed. And yes, I have been reading the comments. And I agree with the fans. That is a bit, a bit disappointing that... At the ending of 2018 and the episode Exhausted, when uh, Veronica suggested that Derek, excuse me, that David wasn't, see, isn't that confusing? Derek David and David Harrington, that David was not Jeffrey's father, yet we've gotten no follow-up on that whatsoever. It's interesting, you would think that Jeffrey would have brought that up in spite when David was, I forbid you to see that boy Justin. It's like, as long as you live in my house, you're not my father. Wait, what? That would have been interesting. But then again, you have to think about it this way, because if loving you was wrong in a lot of ways, kind of samples things from the haves and the have nots. I mean, if Eddie could lie about Kelly being dead, couldn't he couldn't Veronica lie about David not being Jeffrey's father? I'm just saying. But in that case, you know, who is Derek David? Well, I just spent over an hour telling you. <laughs> But uh, in all seriousness, I just wanted to thank everyone for supporting the channel. I have not received this much positive feedback on something in quite some time. Uh, obviously, the line tattoo was a hit or miss. I knew full well leading up to this episode that my credibility was on the line. If I was wrong about the tattoo, I would definitely not be looked at in a positive light because I, I remember getting all kinds of backlash from Jeremy Hanna said, God heard me, not God hurt me. You were wrong, wrong, wrong. But then the tattoo was like, okay, Jeremy, this is it. Tyler Perry could either screw you over because maybe in the original cut, Derek wasn't the guy. But then after all the theory videos you did, you wanted to change it up and make you look stupid. Obviously, that's not the case. But there you go. But uh, to end things off, could you do me a favor?
Aside from subscribing to the channel, aside from commenting your thoughts, aside from giving this video a thumbs up, literally the way YouTube works now, that stuff really does make a difference. Um, I'm a full-time YouTuber, so this is how I make a living. Share this video around. Um, it would mean a lot to me. And on top of that, could you also, if possible, aside from sharing this on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Twitch, uh, Pinterest, I don't know what other social media you use, Snapchat, Facebook, go to all kinds of have and have not Facebook pages and groups and just share this link around. But I would really like it. And this is not something that I've made this channel for. If Tyler Perry himself could get his hands on this video. First of all, I know he's a very busy man, especially with the whole Viacom being dropped from DirecTV as he's moving over to Viacom and he's finishing up the Medea farewell tour and a lot of stuff on his plate. I know in the past there have been times where he shared videos from other YouTubers about acrimony and various other Tyler Perry works. I would be very, very pleased if he got his hands on this video and shared it or even commented or even reached out to me personally. I mean, I've been doing this for a couple years now and the audience has grown to show it. Remember, my long-term goal, like I said it before and I'll say it again, the long-term goal for this channel is to hit 100,000 subscribers so I can get that silver play button award. October 17th, 2017, I quit my full-time job working in the call center while I was doing YouTube on the side because I remember getting that first Google AdSense direct deposit for about 620 bucks. I'm like, I can get paid for talking on YouTube about a show I love. The next month, 1,000. After that, about 1,800, a little over 2,000. The next month, I'm like, I could spend 40 hours a week in a call center, running my mouth on the phone with students, making Liberty University a crap ton of money, while or I could just focus on this full time, grow it from where it was when I quit my job at around 9,000 subscribers and struggle a bit, but make it to where I am now, and I did. And it's all because of you all, a lot of faith, prayer, determination, and we are almost at 70,000 subscribers and the way the channel's growing, my goal of hitting 70,000 before the end of this month will be a reality. And I always said that silver play button to me is the validation I need to say that I did it. But along the way, and guys, I don't, this is part of the video. You can click off if you want to, but I feel like going off on a peaceful rant because I'm happy. You all have made this such a glorious ride. And no, this isn't the final video or anything. I don't want to make it sound like a finale, but <laughs> well, technically it's the finale of this video. Um, People who agree with me, people who disagree with me, but also leave detailed comments about why they disagree with me are my favorite. We have proven that the haves and the have nots is a hit. I mean, the ratings are one thing, the tweets are another, but to actually have a huge community like this, where we talk even during the hiatus about the show, it's a great series. I mean, eat, trust and believe it ain't perfect. But when I get behind this microphone, I'm not just someone who rants about the show. Like I did in this video, I talked about things I didn't like, but how things could have been improved. But then again, I'm not the person who's writing the show. I'm not the person directing it. I'm just a fan who, you know what, maybe this character could have got a bit more development here or there. Because there are plenty of channels out there who upload full episodes and rant about the show and just talk bad about Tyler Perry and his work. But even when I talk in a negative fashion about something... I try to back it up with ways to possibly improve it, but I'm still a fan. So that's how I do things. So for me, getting that 100,000 subscriber silver play button award is my validation. I would like to visit Tyler Perry Studios. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe this video will be the gateway that Tyler Perry, people have told me, Jeremy, the cast members hit you up and you got some autographs and obviously they watch the show, uh, the channel. So maybe Tyler Perry does as well. I maybe sort of don't doubt that, but at the same time, unless I hear from him directly, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't want to hear from him. But, you know, I did hear that Tyler Perry recently, you know, helped um, a family, I think, what, to avoid eviction and paid uh, one of the uh, the kids way through college. But Tyler Perry, I know you're a Christian, so let me give a shout out to myself. Jeremy Carden, 27 years old, uh, living in Lynchburg, Virginia. I was a student at Liberty University. I have two master's degrees, five graduate certificates, a bachelor's, an associate's, and a minor before I was 25. Uh, both master's and the five graduate certificates from the School of Religion. I have a bachelor's in communications, advertising, public relations, 
And obviously that paid off because I'm using social media for a living now. Associates in religion and a minor in biblical studies. I grew up in the church, got saved at the age of eight and was public speaking in church since I was a kid. And that kind of grew to my love of communications. And here I am now. But uh, yeah, I do have a bit of debt there. <laughs> I was a uh, employee at Liberty University online for three years as an academic advisor, uh, you know, helping students get signed up for classes, financially check in, get from registration to their first semester, all the greater graduation. I attended five commencements at Liberty. I have the robes to prove it, but no medallions, unfortunately. So, you know, just giving a shout out to myself. I'm not I'm not looking for a job at Tyler Perry Studios. That's all good. I'm content doing what I do, but it would be cool if a brother could give a sh get a shout out, help me get those 100,000 subscribers or, you know, maybe help me out with those uh, student loans, give me a fresh start at life. That that'll be nice too. Uh maybe a tour of the lovely Dream Building. That would be nice, but you know what? At the end of the day, if none of that happens, if Tyler Perry never responds, if um I never get invited to to a premiere or anything or if I never get that response to a letter I wrote to Tyler Perry Studios two months ago asking for several things that I said I would pay for, posters, pictures, autographs that I would pay for, you know, I never got a response. Jeremy Carden, Lynchburg, Virginia, hit me up. Um, that's all right, because this show has taken me on a journey I never thought expected. I never thought I would be able to do something like this for a living. I never thought I would be able to meet, well, technically not meet, but be in almost constant contact with a great group of fellow fans and addicts of the show, not to mention talking with the cast dead or present on the show, you know, characters who have been killed off, written off or characters who are still on the show. This has been a journey. So if nothing, if nothing ever happens, if Tyler Perry never hits me up or I never get any responses or, uh, you know, Sally may off my back. Hey, this show has taken me to a new level in my life that I never thought I'd dream possible. Season seven isn't confirmed to be the last season, but I do have a theory on that, and that'll be its own separate video. So, this like twenty-minute prologue or epilogue, I guess, was unnecessary, but I felt like you know I had to say that. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Share this channel around. A lot of people who are new was like, I never knew this channel existed. Well, you do now. So let's hit 100,000 subscribers and beyond. And who knows, you know, prayers up. Tyler Perry hears this, but let me know your thoughts on the Derek David mystery. And I'll catch you in the next video because the next quote unquote mega video I do, which I don't think will be as long as this one is about if loving you is wrong. And who is the baby daddy of Alex's black baby? Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, or if you have anything you would like to add to the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with me on social media, go to the description box. All of my links for social media are right there. Also, if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel, make sure to click on the link to PayPal. Any amount helps a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. As a full-time YouTuber, any support from my fans really does mean a lot to me. Finally, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you're kept up to date on any new content I post to the channel. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you in the next video.